Stop all the cow farts too. Oh, that was the other thing. Yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna breed a, a hybrid cow so it doesn't have farts and belches. <laughs> yeah, it could be uh, uh, Michelle Obama or Michael Obama and uh, Gavin Newsom um, on the Democratic uh, ballot. That's uh, that's the latest. Uh, I think it's, I think it's possible. I, I really do. I, I think. Uh, we're to that point where they just have so much control, that's, uh, that's what we could see. The world's first uh, transvestite uh, vice president. Nobody cares. Do you think anybody cares? Look at, look, look, look at the people that are around you. They don't care. When they voted for Joe Biden, they don't care. Oh, you know, yeah, it, it's an indication that we are absolutely screwed. So there's, there's no way that'll ever work. Um, I mean, he's... He's bad. I, I, I saw on the news today. He was wandering around. They had to, you know, the handlers had to go grab him and, and pull him back and direct him. I mean, you know, it's sad. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying you know that, that could happen to anybody in, in old age, um, but you know, it's, there, there's no way that he could get another term. I watched it on the news last night. It was pretty hilarious. He's a stumbling and a mumbling and a mumbling and a mumbling and everything else. He doesn't know where the hell he's at. Yeah, he's gone. The Dan Bongino show played about 35 minutes of 
well keep drinking and out of uh, the Democratic Party uh, denying election results when they when they, when they lost. How was your trip, Clark? It was good, man. It was good. Uh, we had some damage to the car on the way back, so we're, we're dealing with that. But uh, well, it was a great trip. We had a good time. Perfect. Did you run over a moose? No, they had. We, we ran over a. Uh, we went through a construction site where they had cut the road across the highway, and they filled it in with gravel. But all the cars took the gravel away, and so. We uh, we hit that uh, sharp edge of concrete where they cut it out uh, at 45 or 50 miles an hour, and it, it uh, damaged the tire and everything. Oh boy! Well, but you made it home, right? I mean, you didn't have to stop or anything like that. Just screwed up the tire. Um, you know, I, I have the the pressure monitor system up. We didn't lose any air, and there wasn't any shake in the wheel, uh, so we we continued. Um, but when we got home, we realized uh, we were really, really lucky because uh, there was a huge blister on the side of the tire. Yeah, it hit so hard it separated the uh, cords in the sidewall. Well, gentlemen, I'm going to get out of your 73. Thanks for letting me join WK70D. Have a good night, Ed. KG7HR. Good night, Ed. Good night, Mel. Good night in the morning, maybe, there, David. Okay. Good evening. Good night, Mr. Ed. Hey, Bram. How are you copying me tonight? Well, uh, let's see. Let me look at the meter. Hi, right, this is KG7 Oscar Lima from Williams at Kaibab Lake. Holy crap, I thought you were at home. You're 10 over 9. I heard I, I heard you last night. I turned the radio on for a second. You weren't very strong at all. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's just the band condition. Yeah, you're 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 peaking uh, ten over, and um, so it must be really good. Yeah, I'm just doing a hundred watts. I'm just doing a hundred miles an hour. I got my Volkswagen key cut today. Yeah. Yeah, there's a local locksmith dude. He is super, super affordable. I called a couple places. They wanted 150 for just a regular key. And I wanted, you know, the key with the fob and all that. And um, uh, so last week or some time ago, I had him cut just a regular key for 80. And then he had to order the, the fob, but he didn't have one. And so then today I paid 150 for a fob. So they uh, want like upwards of $350 at um, other places, and then the dealer probably 400 or something. Yeah, it's hard work to do almost all those keys now, including Volkswagen. Really? Yeah. Oh, um, how long have they been doing that? Because I never heard of that before. Now. Walmart doesn't cut keys anymore for any kind of cars, um, but Home Depot still does, and uh, so Ace Hardware. Yeah, call, uh, call call around to the different ones in your town and see. The one up the road here, though, does. Uh, they even did the uh, the Lexus, uh, which is a laser cut key, and 
I took it in there and the guy said, oh, no problem. They got a computer uh, uh, controlled machine. They put it in there and scans it. And he, um, he didn't have the blank. Uh, I ordered the blank off of Amazon because um, I went in there and he said, I don't have the blank, but if you bring me the blank, it's uh, I'll, I'll cut it. So that's what I did. And the, the blank was on Amazon for, I don't know, 20, 20 bucks maybe. Um, and then uh, he cut it. And then what I did is I just took the uh, uh, the screws out and put the uh, the, the key section into uh, into the the new shell. Um, but anyways, I had I had to just because it's got the, the the little buttons built in. So uh, the shell and the key fob was like twenty thirty bucks. Then he cut it for ten bucks or something, and then I just moved the little uh, the little circuit board over. Oh wow, yeah, I'm thinking about doing that with the old one uh, because it's so worn out. Uh, but yeah, today I got like the new the new key where you know on the Volkswagen side you you can pull them apart, and uh, basically there's a transponder in the top half and then the keyless in the bottom part. Um, but uh, yeah, he just cuts it all like he he just he lives down the road from me. I show up at his house at five o'clock, you know, and, and he'll cut the key. So. I've had him cut Harley Davidson keys, all sorts of keys that other people say they can't cut. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, on the forerunner, um, you can buy uh, the key fob with the buttons. You know, it uh, lock unlock. It does the uh, rear window and all that. Uh, but and, and I bought them. They're cheap. But uh, the problem with that is um, you have to go through a sequence. Uh, to program the new key fobs. Yeah, and it's the most ridiculous thing you've ever uh, ever seen. There's YouTube videos of it. You um, need to sit the, in the truck, and you have to turn like the, the, the key, uh, the ignition on and off like five times, and then you have to uh, do un lock and unlock on the power locks ten times, and then you have to go back and hit the key on and off five times, and then you have to you know, you hit the, the headlights on three times, and then you have to go back to the power lock ten times, and it's this whole thing. But the, the problem, uh, the uh, the power lock solenoids, they won't make it ten times. Uh, what, what happens to those solenoids is they, uh, they, they wear out. And, uh, and they won't they won't make ten locks and unlocks. So they'll every time you hit it, it's fine. There's enough power to, to make the thing uh, unlock the door so you never notice this. But uh, but if you try to get it to do 20 times, the solenoids uh, heat up and it won't complete the, the cycle, so there's no way you can ever program them. Wow. Yeah, I, I had uh, done some Chevy keys that were sort of like that, but not quite that ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you ever try it on your car, if you're bored one time, do unlock and lock ten times, and you'll start. You'll you'll notice that they slow down. You know, it's like chum 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 chum. You know, slower, slower, slower. They they lose power. You know, they heat up the little solenoid, and they're twenty years old. And so, yeah, it's a huge issue with these. I tried putting a charger on there, putting it on boost. You know, on the on the battery, trying to volt the things. Um, but they just they just lose power, and so you can never program it. Wow. Yeah, this guy just uh, uses uh, software and stuff and goes in through the OBD2 and he's got like this kind of tablet type of thing and he just does it that way. But yeah, um, so the Ace can do all this stuff like the, uh, the keyless stuff on a Volkswagen? Yeah, the, the alarm system is separate on the 4Runner, so you can't, you can't program it through there. Uh, but it's just kind of funny because everybody, uh, they'll actually buy four new door actuators, take the doors apart and replace them, and then it works fine. But I, I don't know. I'm not going to do that. What, I, what I'm going to do is if, uh, if I have a problem with it, I'll just call a lock guy like you have and have the whole system ripped out. Hey guys, i got to shut my generator down here in a few minutes. And that has to be off by 9 here, so... I'll see you guys uh, soon, TG7. Hello. All right, David. Have a good night. Good night, man. All right, good night, David. Well, so I guess you'll be home tomorrow, so we'll catch you tomorrow night. K-E-600-WB. Okay, Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Bye.
Well, I actually kind of put my foot into the little car today, and I, I was kind of surprised. I mean, it's slow, but I was a little surprised on what a five-cylinder can do. Yeah, the five-cylinder one? Yeah. It's got an interesting sound to it. It's completely stock, so it's not noisy or fart canny or anything like that, which which I love. I don't like noisy crap. Yeah. I, I want to be able to, to pull up into a parking lot and not have anybody notice me, you know? Yeah. What all did you have to do to it, then? Um, I haven't done anything to it yet. Um, I do need to, at some point, replace the core support. I, I already got one. And then, um... I need to figure out the airbag fault, which might be the harness under the seat. It wasn't on when I got it, but it is now. And so I gotta figure that one out. Yeah. Those cars are funny because the whole front clip is plastic and they hit things and the insurance company totals out the vehicle every time. So, uh... so that's what happened with this one. It still smells like a brand new car inside of it. What year is this thing? It's old. It's a 2008, but it smells brand new. And okay, what's the mileage? Uh, 117,000 miles. Well, it should be good. Yeah. I'm sure the guy I got it from wasn't very nice to it, um, but I think mostly his wife was driving it. This this guy told me that he rode the Harley back to Kingman at 110 miles an hour. It doesn't even have a sixth gear. Can you imagine that, Terry? What happened, though? Well, he rode the Harley what? He said he rode it back about 100 to 110 miles an hour down the 40. You, you know how that thing's like already tacked out at like 75 on the freeway, you know what I mean? Because it's only a five-speed. Uh, he, came, he came to your house and you guys said the train? I thought you went to Kingman. No, we met in Seligman. So in Seligman was the halfway mark. So he had to ride back and I had to drive back. Yeah, you can't get that motorcycle to go that fast. There's no, there's no way in this world to 100 miles an hour. That thing's topped out. Oh, uh, no, I don't go to 110, 120. Yeah, well, not my big ass. I mean, they didn't. But anyways, yeah, downhill. Well... Uh, I think uh, the most I I don't I never tried, but it, I mean, it was like at 90 miles an hour I had at one time passing somebody, but it had quite a bit more left in it. It's just that it would be so uh, rubbed out, like uh, I would be afraid it would blow up. I know, I know. So I say it's downhill too. Uh, we used to go to uh, we used to go to Palm Springs, and we used to come from uh, from uh, San Bernardino Riverside, and we and we go uh, coming down out of Whitewater. And, and hit it hard coming out of there and do, as, as you get down by the windmills there, I'd, I'd give it maybe 110, maybe a, a downhill swing, you know, with a good wind. My Jixer would do 100 miles an hour in first gear and it still wasn't out of RPMs. It didn't sound good, but it would do it. But anyways, yeah, they, they, yeah, they don't go that fast. Well, he would... He, he's dreaming. I don't know what he was looking at, but yeah. Anyway, he, he said that's how he wrote it home, so I'm like, well, he probably wasn't very nice to the car then either. No, 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 exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a five speed, too. I mean, so with the 96 six speed, yeah, that, that's easily doable because the, the six speed really made a big deal uh, when I had that, when I had the 2007. It's much, much more. Uh, Oh, yeah, that was the first thing I realized right away. I was like, I don't want this thing. I'm, I'm not doing this. This is for, like, 55 miles an hour or less. Must be a damn moped. Yeah, I don't know. I remember my, uh, I remember my Dyna. It's like you're always dropping a gear trying to get it to go a little bit faster uphill because it just, it won't pull. I've had too many sport bikes, that was the thing. It was like, they go from, you know, a one liter bike that, you know, I don't even know what the top speed of that thing was. That thing just scared the crap out of me. Like, I was always very respectful of that bike. I never, ever pushed it at all. Um, some of the 600s that I had before, I, I beat the crap out of them. And even those were like 10 times more capable than any Harley I've ever rode.
110 miles an hour, I'd be afraid of those cams flying apart, you know? Well, he doesn't know that, and he doesn't care, but yeah, they're not going to fly apart. What they're going to do is they're going to they're gonna lock up in the in the block, you know, in in the, in the crankcase, or, or, or they're just going to lock up because they're, uh, they're not going to really lock up, probably. They're just they're going to lose timing, is what they're going to do, and then, and then things are going to go, blah, 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 and be dead, you know? He did. He did say it's a lot slower than his '96. I think his uh, his other bike is like a, a soft tail, or no, it's a Dyna. I think it's a Dyna um, with a '96 cubic inch motor. I think it's like a 2008 or something. And uh, he did say that yeah, it was a lot smaller. I don't think he knows about the issues with the twin cams, or he probably would have never uh, wanted it. Well, that's his issue, huh? I bought it not really knowing much about it. I was warned about it at least before I bought it. Uh, but and I thought, well, man, it can't be that big of a deal. But when that motor was sitting there running, Terry, you could hear noise up in the top end or somewhere in it. It was noisy. And I don't think they should be making any kind of noise that sounds like valve train noise. They should be pretty quiet, shouldn't they? it was really that noisy when I first got it um, but that was uh, you know I, I, I tried to get rid of that thing forever so and I didn't really want to you know get a little tiny car the size of a shoe uh, but you know I mean it's a hell of a lot safer than a bike and um, I drove that thing from here to Cords Junction going kind of downhill one direction it was hitting 35 miles per gallon on the way back, it hit about 31 miles per gallon. And uh, so that's kind of cool. So if I ever need to go somewhere really far or something, or I needed to, like, bring something to somebody, you know, I mean, like, I can afford to do it. I don't have to sit here and go, sorry, I only get 14 miles per gallon in my truck. Yeah, and, and just the, the end of this can problem, but, uh, you know, I bought the 2001 in 2000, there was no talk about this, this cam problem, no, this cam tensioner problems, I, mean, I, I was like, it wasn't until like, uh, mid 2001, almost 2002, that all of a sudden I started hearing about it, and I go, what? Who the hell, how come nobody told me about this stuff? Well, we're just now finding out. Yeah, I don't think I probably will get another bike again. I'm, I'm getting too old. I was just looking at it. I was like, oh, my God. Uh, I'm going to be 47 this month, and my kid is six years old. I'm like, my God, I'll be like 60 when he's 18. <laughs> so like, and that's the older one. Yeah, I think I sold mine at 67. It was, yeah, that was about it. I figured that's enough. It's getting too dangerous out there with everybody texting and not paying attention. Yep. So I think I've got like the, the new variant of COVID. Well, you don't need that. Been, we've been sick for like a couple of weeks. I have RSV. Well, so Junior got sick over two weeks ago. And it started out with throwing up in a fever, and then um, the fever got really bad, and he, he went to the ER. He also gave himself pink eye. And uh, when he went to the ER, he didn't have a fever anymore, so they didn't do anything other than give him medicine for pink eye. And then 
he was fine for a couple of days, enough to start school, and then he, he was acting weird, and then realized he had a fever again. By that time, the other kid had started the same thing. And the whole time that this was going on, I had noticed I had had a sore throat. And um, so then, yesterday or the day before, I suddenly had a fever. And um, it's been back and forth, back and forth, just like COVID. So you need to take one of those tests, um, just to make sure, you know. But uh, all right, I, I'm going to have to get out here. I don't know if Parker's still in there or, or, or Ed or whatever, but uh, I'm going to say 73 and kiss you all tomorrow, okay? E6RWB. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, good night, Terry. Have a good night, Terry. kg 7 h r well, Junior got tested, and he um, tested negative, and then they were, they were saying that there's this new, you know, variant that they've been seeing, and also it seems to be in the eye as well, but also um, they were concerned it might be strep, but it tested negative for that, so they sent out a culture on that, but it, he's still running a fever. I mean, it's he's been sick since Thursday, not last week, but the week before that, and he was like normal for a couple of days and i remember last time i had covid that's kind of what it did to me i was like good for three days and then it started to come back yeah it's scary uh, i don't know could, like i said it could be uh, uh rsv though that seems to be that's what it is uh, these days is that like a, a viral version of strep throat because that's kind of what they were saying yeah you'll have to look it up I'm, uh, that, that's what they said i had uh I thought it was COVID. I tested negative, and they said it was that, but it's been going around like crazy. How long did it take you to get over it? Two weeks. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll look it up. It's probably what it is then. You know, what happened was they went to the school convention over here where they, you know, uh, do like a thing where they have all the, like, PBS kids sing, and, and he went to that and, you know, got to do that, and then, you know, before he started school, and so the next thing you know, he's sick. So, I think that's where it came from. Yeah, most likely. He did not want to go to school. He was crying. It was it was bad. And it's not like when I went to school where, like, a kid would cry, the teachers would try and make him feel better. He didn't give a crap. And then um, he tried to follow us out of the, the room because they had him in, like, the lunchroom. They eat breakfast before school. And this teacher went up to him like she was going to give him a hug or something. And then the other teacher tried to grab him or something. And I was mad. I said, you better get your hands off my kid. You know, so this isn't working. And so eventually we just had to walk off and leave him crying in the school. He's basically never been away from us, uh, you know, with anybody else for more than like 30 minutes. So it was really hard for him the first day. But... Uh, yeah, he just uh, didn't handle that too well. I think he was probably still sick. We just didn't realize it. Yeah, do yourself a favor. You're close to my age. Don't have any kids. Because <laughs> at this age, it ain't no fun, Clark. Yeah, no, I don't have any. I'm good. It, it's, it's like heart-wrenching sometimes, you know? It really is. And then you worry about, are you going to be around to watch your kids grow up? I mean, like, because we never know what the hell is going to happen. I drank half my life to almost to the point of killing myself and smoked cigarettes and, and did all kinds of bad stuff. And, you know, I mean, people die a lot earlier than 60 years old these days. Yeah, I believe so. Um, and there are devices that you can use. 
um, that would mimic a phone line, and it would be like, you know, a MiFi type thing. And you might actually be able to uh, make a phone patch actually work for real. Yeah, I, I, we were looking into that a few years back. Uh, I can't remember, Magic Jack. I think, yeah, Magic Jack. Um, you, I, I, I decided you could do it with that. Um, Magic Jack hooks up to the internet and then uh, uh, hooks up to a phone. And then, uh, you know, you could, you could do it that way. I, I didn't want to have to buy a Magic Jack and pay 20 bucks a month or something, you know, just to screw around with it. But, uh, yeah, I don't think it'll work. I, I think there's a way to do it cheaply. Because um, all you need to do is power the phone. But, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure. Uh, not to uh, look into it. I thought it would be neat. Because if you, uh, I mean, technically, if uh, if you have the handset, the phone wired into this, um, I could put the switch here, pick up the handset, and then talk to you guys on it. Yeah, that'd be cool. I've got these um, cordless phones. They're newer, like Panasonic's, and they have Bluetooth and they have something else. And uh, they're designed actually to where you can like actually turn your cell phone on and have it go to this instead. And then you use just like these cordless phones. And um, I'm not really sure if something like that exists or something else where you could just use like your you know your your phone through a bluetooth device and uh you know power up uh, everything in between yeah see i can I'm, I'm keying it now from the phone patch uh so all that works you know I, I can leave the microphone on the desk and key it and uh, flip it up and uh, go back to receive so all of that works uh I wish we still had regular hardwired phone lines available. Yeah, when I put it into a uh, phone patch, and then there's no audio, you know. So I'm, I'm wondering, I don't know, I guess the phone is going to, the, the actual phone itself is going to need um, uh, power, right? Yeah, like I think 24 volts or something like that they were designed to run on. I can't remember now. And it probably has a carbon pile microphone. I used to look for those old uh, Bakelite uh, phones at Goodwill. And like when we were in Seattle, I'd go to the Goodwill outlet and I would see them over there once in a while. I had a bunch of them. The problem was they were always in kind of crappy shape. But they sell for stupid money. Oh, no, yeah, there there definitely is. If you just Google search it, uh, I haven't seen it before. There was a guy making uh, something um, to use your old phone patches and stuff and place calls through uh, your radio to uh, um, your, your cell phone service. Yeah, I, I think I could do it if I got a magic check. I could, uh, I could get on here and uh, uh, call and then, uh, you know, um, you could answer and then you could sit here and talk to the guys through it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I was looking at the phone across here and thought that'd be kind of cool. Oh, it would definitely be awesome. I've got a phone patch for uh, Kenwood somewhere, and I don't know. It, it's probably for like an 820 or something because it's got a four pin on it. Catch you later. Hopefully, you get the uh, tires sorted out soon, and um, 
Yeah, I'll probably be on here as long as I'm not, like, you know, sweating to death with a fever. And then I'll probably still be on here anyway, because what else am I going to do, right? KG7HQRT.